I had never seen Robert so angry before. It started out as a simple disagreement over which gaming console to order. He wanted the PlayStation 5, but I had already ordered the Nintendo Switch for the family. We were sitting in our old 2009 Dodge Charger, parked outside the Wendy's in Holland, Michigan. It was supposed to be a quick stop for lunch, but it quickly turned into a nightmare. Our daughter, Emily, was in the back seat, happily munching on her fries when Robert's voice suddenly escalated. He began calling me names, his words sharp and mean. Emily's face went pale, her eyes wide with fear. She let out a piercing scream as Robert slapped my arm and yelled at me, his face twisted in rage. Robert, calm down! I can cancel the order and get the PS5 instead, I pleaded, trying to soothe him, but it only made things worse. He threw open the car door and stormed out, his face red and eyes blazing with anger. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, and all I could think about was getting Emily to safety. Her cries echoed in my ears as she begged, Mom, get me out of here. Get me away from him, Mom. Save me. With trembling hands, I started the car and pulled out of the parking spot, intending to drive away and put some distance between us. But before I knew it, Robert leaped onto the hood of the car, gripping the windshield wipers with white-knuckled hands. Mom, he's on the car! Emily screamed, her voice breaking with terror. I panicked. Robert's face was right in front of me, his eyes wild and his fists pounding on the windshield. He tried to break the window on the driver's side door, his fury only increasing. I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to get away, to protect Emily. I turned the wheel, hoping he would let go and get off the car, but he slipped. I watched in horror as he tumbled off the hood and hit the ground hard. His head struck the pavement with a sickening thud. Oh my God, Robert! I shouted, slamming on the brakes. I jumped out of the car, but it was too late. He lay there unconscious, blood pooling beneath his head. I called 911, my hands shaking uncontrollably. The paramedics arrived quickly, but there was nothing they could do. They rushed him to the hospital, but the doctor said he had a brain bleed that was inoperable. Robert was gone. Now, as I sit in this cold courtroom, my heart heavy with grief and guilt, I replay the events over and over in my mind. Could I have done something differently? Should I have handled it another way? I never meant for any of this to happen. Robert was my husband, Emily's father. I would never ever hurt him in a million years. The prosecutor's voice cuts through my thoughts, bringing me back to the harsh reality. I face a charge of moving violation causing death. They say I could spend up to a year in jail or pay a $2,000 fine. As the trial looms, I can only hope that the judge and jury understand the fear that drove my actions that day. I just wanted to protect my daughter. I never imagined it would end like this, with Robert dead and our lives shattered over something as trivial as a video game console.